We just have half an hour. So thank you, thank you. That's Andre, that's Markus. Uh, you, can, you can look it up. Maybe you recognize us. Uh, so we're doing this thing, Netzpolitik, uh, with a lot of volunteers as well. And we're here to, to tell you a story that started more than, more, yeah, over a year ago. But only really in the last month, in the last uh, two weeks, really uh, got explosive. So we've, we've been active for 11 years now, but it's just uh, in the last couple of years that we've uh, been leaking documents, maybe from the BND, the German Nachrichtendienst, uh, the, the state Trojan that was, what was publicly developed. Um, so basically, uh, the chancellor's office, we had, uh, we had all sorts of, well, big enemies, and now we have got this letter, signed by several authorities. And what we did, of course, was just to, um, to publish the, uh, the entire letter on our, on our website. Uh, Spiegel uh, newspaper was working on it. Well, and Merkel was involved, and just the reference to, to press freedom, it wouldn't be that easy to, to proceed in such a way uh, with, with media, we thought. Well, but at least in so far that hasn't, hasn't stopped us uh, carrying on our work, but let's, let's just jump back to February a few months ago. Well, what we, what we found was information on how uh, the, the German uh, it's not it's not a secret service as such it's well, the the, the, interior uh, secret the interior secret service but uh, pr for the protection of the constitution so called and uh, this was information uh, of broad monitoring programs um, and these these uh, drafts uh, and internal memos um, they were p talking about uh, we need n more more money and more personnel for uh, just to manage the amount of data uh, that we're processing. And uh, this was this was something um, about about the Office for the Protection of the Constitution. These documents that uh, was addressed in Bundestag in Parliament uh, by several by several representatives and. These internal structures that are uh, targeted or uh, specifically for, for information surveillance, for internet uh, surveillance, uh, they've been exposed in that sense uh, as structures within, within this service. The way they deal with the data, the way they filter them, they have a whole unit for that. Communication, graph analysis, uh, movement profile analysis um, for their spies. So the things that we have been warning about for years and years connected to data retention and everyone was saying, well, this just can only be done for single people. But then it turns out, no, they spend a lot of money and a lot of uh, jobs more than we have journalists are working on this we published this in English as well no one seemed interested but at the same time we published this data retention in Germany was reintroduced by the German justice minister uh, the interest still was low and we were a bit disappointed about that we published it at 10 past 9 tweeted it and 10 15 minutes later Maas the justice minister um, tweeted us about his new proposals for data retention so our article was below the radar that's what we thought but no that wasn't the case at all. In early July, on a Saturday morning, I woke up and found on Twitter that German station, Deutschlandfunk radio station, had an article and I clicked on it and that contained the message. Um, the president of the Secret Interior Service was uh, had uh, reported to criminal offense um, about leaks and I was thinking that could be our article. I looked it up in our own blog and thought, yeah, that's about us. This we thought was about us and we thought it was about um, disclosing internal secrets, uh, professional secrets, and this was against the sources, our sources that had given, given us materials from inside the Interior Secret Service. This was written by someone called Rolf Clement, an interesting person. Well, you could say um, he is an 
embedded speaker of the Interior Secret Service within the station Deutschlandfunk. This is his week Wikipedia page. Um, just by coincidence, uh, the, the last symposium by the Interior Secret Service was moderated by him, the one where Maas and the President said, this is a scandal, someone wants to wreck the Interior Secret Service. So, Clement seems to have been, seems to have made himself a tool, let himself make, made a tool, and um, leaked that there was going to be a criminal report, uh, and added that this was nothing to worry about, press freedom would not be impeded because it was just against the sources. Nonsense. Now, we published this too, and there was a lot of criticism against us for publishing it, and people, it's, this was, we, we were kicking up a storm about this, using it for our purposes, for our propaganda. Um, and, and, of course, now that we've learned a lot of law, uh, the general federal prosecutor is not even responsible for disclosing interior secrets, um, professional secrets. Um, but if press freedom is affected, um, this would be a case for the German federal prosecutor, who is kind of the legal arm of the government, normally only supposed to be investigating terror and espionage, and of course uh, serious treason cases. So that would made us think that it's not it's not just about our sources and their internal secrets, their professional um, disclosures. Uh, we were talking to journalists who thought this is a scandal. Um, but there was nothing tangible except this one report in Deutschlandfunk from by Rolf Clement. So this is why this message made the rounds in our immediate surroundings, but didn't have such an impact as the latest um, latest revelations, the latest events had. Um, so um, general federal prosecutors' jobs doesn't doesn't really include investigating journalists. Um, so. It, it, he could smell that something was going on, and we tried to investigate. We tried to find out what was going on. Didn't get get very far. And then on the 30th of July, it was uh, at lunchtime. We had this formal letter uh, accusing us of treason. We opened this, and well, first we went, "What the fuck is treason?" We had to find out what the actual charge was. And then we thought, well, challenge accepted. And then, of course, we blogged it. And then looked up what treason, what the charge actually contains, what they would actually be charging us with, uh, what, what the crime was. So this was about at least one year of, of prison. Uh, it could actually be life imprisonment in serious cases. and. Um, your mother called, having read in teletext that there could be a life imprisonment. Um, yeah, we told her not to worry that much. And then the phones went wild and we had media inquiries after media inquiries and couldn't do anything else. But fortunately, quite soon we had a lot of support from our surroundings, from our friends uh, who came around with beer, some of them actually with champagne. We were there until midnight. Uh, devising strategies and um, trying to find out what this actually came from, what's the historical background for this crime. It happened twice as a kind of award by the government to journalists in 1962, the very famous Spiegel affair, and then in 83, a fairly le unknown case against Concrete, a left-wing magazine. It used to be well, more well-known than it is today. They were telling stories against about the military secret service um, but Erich Kestner has written about it because Landesverrat, high treason or treason, is the charge used by the Nazis to put people in concentration camps, comes from Prussian history and kind of lingers on in today's German law. And we weren't actually aware that it could be used against us because there has to be intent in order to commit treason, intent to threaten seriously threaten the uh, state and we are not terrorists, we are not uh, lawyers, we're not, we're just journalists, so we didn't look this up, we just press submit if we find something. Um, 
if, if we get leaked. So uh, we weren't, we hadn't investigated things so carefully beforehand, the legal implications and um, so um, we would have to go via our lawyer and our admin and because it turned out that our blog wasn't as available for a while as we would like it to be. And we really weren't prepared for the huge onslaught of, of attention that we had. The three or four times the volume um, that we have in, what, a month during the whole, a single day, there was, was Twitter communication. And quite absurdly, we had this award, Germany Country of Ideas. Uh, that was just a few days after we had been given this award, and so we could take this photo. Marcus is holding the award about Country of Ideas, and Andre is holding the charge of the government, charging the awarded place of ideas. So that was the interesting mood that we were in at the time. So there was a kind of hatred love that we were feeling from the government. But finally, we knew that someone was actually reading our articles before those charges. We thought that no one was really interested in the way we would want them to be. So we uh, we reserved this domain, landesverrattreason.org, uh, which with some information what that actually means. Um, someone kindly set this up for us. Um, other media um, mirrored our, our material. Collective, a research um, um, <laughs> research uh, group said we they were mirroring it, and uh, even Bild Zeitung, the well-known tabloid, more, normally on the conservative side, they mirrored it, um, and some others just linked to our website. Um, so we had this absurd situation that. People wanted to um, talk to us. We don't, didn't have a legal department. We're thinking two years prison. It could be on the cards. So we need lawyers. We need money for them. So there was a huge um, funding. Um, at least we could Twitter screenshots from the archive telling about uh, because we had media teams in the office we wanted to give them some some background and, and some screenshots and we were able to to make our international bank account number a trending hashtag on Twitter even our own bank itself twittered that account number and uh, and we said this is probably the most well-known bank account number in the world uh, unfortunately they didn't waive the the charges, the, the account fees. And then the next day it started, we had never been victim or part of caricatures. Uh, some of, just a few of the many that, had, that were published. Um, we were kind of sad that Extra 3, Heute Show, the large news satire shows were on holiday, but um, we've had some coverage uh, we had planned, Andre and I, to, to spend a weekend somewhere in the nature, somewhere in the world, but someone actually organized a demo and we said, oh shit, we wanted just some time off. This is not really convenient, the whole treason thing. And now they even want to do a demo and we can't get out of that. And uh, uh, we were worrying, will we be standing there with about 40 people in the heat and no one will be interested? But uh, fortunately, things turned out different. Um, people around us, in our surroundings, organized a demo. Thank you so much to all of you. And we are coming to that. Um, we are coming to the demo later. So while we were sitting in the office drinking beer, the whole time answering media queries from throughout the world, people were sit sitting and setting up the domain landesverrat.org, organizing the demo, organizing campaigns. So that was super, super. And we were busy making screenshots from, from the sites that were reporting about us. We were top news in the national media, national broadcaster website, tagesschau.de. Friday night, our server was kind of uh, back. And then, again, another local news show, uh, national news show, that is, Heute Journal. Um, they were making an exception and blogging our URL, which they normally don't do. So thank you. Um,
next time we'll be better prepared because the server was down, of course. So um, we had all these media people in the office. Uh, this is how, what treasons look like. Um, the gesture is known from the Chancellor Angela Merkel, if you don't know. So that was the demonstration. Franz Josef Strauss, minister implied in the Spiegel Affäre. So we thought no more beaches, no, no one was going to go there. Are we going to see the, the Verfassungsschutz? Or, but we picked the nicest route through the middle of Berlin, and it was pretty full. 2,000 people, quote, treason, air quote, so reported in, in site online, so thanks a lot to everyone, everyone who is there. But there were several other uh, decentralized uh, actions. With, with small demos in, in Munich and all over the place, we had, we had street art, make Landes verraten at war. And it was carried on, of course, online, uh, the equivalent netzpolitik.us, uh, statements in, in various languages, in Turkish, in Catalan. Jacob was involved in that. asking for the charges to be dropped. Um, many, many people supported us and really inspired us. My whole Twitter timeline signed, thank you. The whole thing went around the world. Uh, this is a Nepali newspaper, then uh, the Himala Himalayan, then there's a Greek media outlet. We were talking about people from France, Spain, wherever, and they were all completely flashed. That we were so flashed that we were in all these worldwide media. Uh, a whole new component was, was introduced here. The attack on us was actually an in foreign policy damage to, the, to, the, to Germany. The Organization for co um, Cooperation in Europe was complaining. Uh, I don't... And so all around this weekend, it was uh, mass, the Justice Minister went through the cameras and said to the federal prosecutor, you can't do it this way, in such a public way, uh, to, to just censoring journalists this way. Um, <laughs> Germany, in a list of press freedom, uh, is currently on, on rank number 12. And we were then, there were statements made asking whether this could be kept, if this could uh, shouldn't be changed and uh, there is some real damage to Germany's reputation and it, it's in the way that press freedom is handled in this country. And then we thought, okay, this is over. The Justice Minister has told the General Federal Prosecutor to, to suspend the investigations. We thought there's no further interest and we took some time off. And then suddenly uh, the whole government seems to have been implicated. Um, it was everyone against everyone. There was a whole conflict that um, someone, someone's lying, someone said. Um, people were just pointing fingers at each other. No one wanted to be responsible. Who was actually the one that had raised these charges? And uh, so here we have the general federal prosecutor, and suddenly he was gone. Who could have thought that? It's not our fault. He was told to take early retirement. So again, there's the question. The interior minister said on Friday, we didn't know anything. State Secretary Emily Harbour, uh, here pictured next to our interior minister, Mazier, said we, did have, we didn't know anything to Tagesschau, the major German news broadcaster, or um, news program. So um, the state secretary said, Okay, Interior Minister Speaker said, well, we have talked to a few people and no one knew anything. Wednesday, it turned out this, that wasn't quite true. Several departments within the Interior Ministry did know about the investigations because the um, Criminal Police Office had reported and um, it, it, 
it went it became so absurd that the interior ministry's defense strategy was to tell the press well we have some chaotic chaotic state of things sorry uh, yes that's the way it is uh, against uh, uh, towards some newspapers and broadcasters say that uh, the state secretary was informed but was instructed not to say anything so um, the message was sorry we don't have we don't really have things in order in, in in our shop that's strange isn't it so more questions were raised we did this we got this award about country of ideas um, the German president Joachim Gag was the one who had given us this award. That was quite funny. Uh, so Joachim Gag's signature, the same day that he had signed the <laughs> the letter confirming the dismissal of the federal, the state federal prosecutor, um, the general federal prosecutor. So. Um, we had known that this date was on for quite a while. It was going to be the 5th of August for a long time. And then now there was this f f funny coincidence um, that Tagesschau, the major news program, began with this news. And meanwhile, here we have Jochen Uhl, um, parliamentarian, very radical when it comes to pro-surveillance statements. So, um, let's come to the open questions. So what's the remain, what is there that remains in, the, in terms of uh, political responsibility or legal uh, finger pointing? The interior ministry says it was ju for justice and the other way around. And it's all, well, they told us it's a, it's a, it's a state secret and um, all this uh, back and forth uh, that leaves us with a lot of open questions. And we made a sort of timeline to to display, well, which quite displays the process more or less nicely, but I think there are still a few points uh, to sort out. And that will at least go to the legal committee uh, in, the, in the Bundestag, in the German parliament. We're, we're, yet, we're, we're not exactly uh, upset that, that uh, Ranger, the prosecutor, was, was made, forced to, or to take his leave, uh, sacked. But the necessity to proceed in that way, we, well, there is so much disagreement on that uh, that we want to know what information was available in, in which points where. And Herr Müller, well, obviously in, in, in the uh, in the in the office, everyone is called Müller. But we would like to know um, who was the person influencing the the prosecutor, who was um, who was maybe already observing us, and we had documents that were already secret. But those were different documents than the ones that we were attacked for now in this form. We for publishing them. Mark confidential. The notes so, saying that we would be prosecuted was actually more secret than what we published. So we'll, we'll, we're trying to get get hold of this uh, this document that was made in advance to evaluate us, but um, well, we'll see how how we proceed. And we do want to know about about su surveillance that was maybe already in place. Well, uh, the, first, the first explanation was, don't worry, um, there aren't executive means being, uh, well, nothing, nothing concrete like, like arrests or a, a house, a searching your house. But maybe, you know, maybe Monday, it sounded like it could just go on the next week. So we we were in sort of uh, waiting position, uh, maybe anticipating the whole the whole range of, of weaponry, and but we we know the people here from Congress from years the the, the tinfoil hats have always been encrypting everything, and we are quite uh, conscious of this. So our office is maybe well. 
we're not sure. We're not sure what kind of what kind of mobile surveillance, uh, actual physical surveillance in front of our office. We don't know. This could be the Bundesnachrichtendienst, the the secret service, or maybe even police. But if if you do know something, well, you can let us know over over an uh, anonymous means. And so we'd like to see we'd like to see the files, um, but it's we we are entitled to see them at some point. But it seems to be a classic strategy of just keeping you waiting. Um, Verfassungsschutz will have to have to wait and discuss uh, the level of, of secrecy, and it just takes a few to a few weeks to see what. Uh, confidential and to enforce that right to, to just see the things that we are allowed to see. And one one success is is that's great that um, the charges at, at least at, uh, against us too as, as persons they were recently lifted just uh, several days afterwards. And uh, this is an important signal I think because uh, whistleblowers we couldn't we wouldn't have that kind of information we wouldn't have a uh, an inquiry into 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 the BND uh, NSA affair in our in our parliament we it's it's the other way around we should protect whistleblowers more instead of criminalizing the ones involved in obviously publishing these document So data retention, we are, we are clearly opposed to that, obviously, and that's all about the small print, uh, the, the paragraph of, of data trading, basically, or illegitimate trading. This is included in these, in these legal changes, and so we, we include this sort of sub-paragraph in our, in our claim against and clear position against data retention. So it's not about like I'm, I, I have a talk and what's the topic of it, but um, it's being misdirected from the contents of the publications itself uh, to the legal proceedings. And that's, that's pro problematic from a press point of view as well. Um, so. We don't need that kind of retention. That's basically the, the, yeah. the, the sum of the So surveillance on a mass scale without suspicion has to be go, has to go. So we're we're active. We're present in all these in all these inquiry commissions, and that's becoming a much broader topic i think it's not not just for the exactly these tin foil hats from the congress who knew it all along but it's um well the, especially the secret services developing a kind of life of their own without means of control we are sort of internally divided in our editing office where, whether we are sort of pro eliminate secret services altogether but the way that it is um, the police collaboration, for instance, in, in there, are, there are so many problems attached to this that maybe the tendency is to, to, to go and say they can. So the institution of parliamentary control has to be strengthened and improved. It has to stop being just a simulation of democracy, but a real democratic control, controlling what goes on there. And if these three institutions of the legislative, the judicative, and the executive can't manage this, then the fourth parliament must have to take away much that we intend to do. We have these t shirts. So it says, an abyss of treason. 
we got the seizures in time, a small addition only. Uh, we would sell them against the donation, at least 15 euros, please, outside at the Digital Courage stand, somewhere next to the Digital Courage tent, uh, just next to our tent here where we're talking right now. We have stickers for your notebooks, so, well, you can use them anywhere outside this area. Outside the um, we are founded, funded by donations. Um, we are celebrating our 11th birthday, which was actually last Tuesday. Uh, the, that was the first blog posting. And there'll be a small conference on the 4th of September about that. What we would like to say is, all this is part of a very elaborate fight that we have to fight uh, against suspicionless surveillance. Never give up. Thanks a lot. It's not just us. Uh, let's not make heroes of us. We want you to join us. We need you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And get those documents to us. Okay, I hope we've been able to kind of cover that this so. Thanks for listening to what you think as well. Sebastian. And then. And then we still speak out to CC and EM. I think that would be our hashtag. CC and EM. Thank you very much. Have we got a hashtag? Did we define one earlier? <laughs> Spread the news if you listen to us. And give an applause to Markus Beckedahl and André Meister on stage. If you're non-German speaking and you've listened to this, we'd like you to tell your friends that you can follow German talks because we don't know how to reach you if you're English and don't come to these talks and don't hear from, from the stage that we are translating. This is so fun, so much fun. Okay, get off the stage. T-shirts and stickers outside somewhere. And we'll be around for the next few days. Just talk to us.